Hello there Libras, welcome to your May 2018 tarot reading. So uh, once again, I am so sorry for publishing your video very late. Um, it's definitely a week later than all the other signs, so I am really, really sorry. I hope that is still helpful for you guys as you navigate the energies for May 2018. Um, first of all, it just seems to me like you're heading into to some, some new territory, some new things, and it can bear fruit, and it actually can provide a lot of opportunities for you. But the, the major warning sign here with this spread is, is telling you to take it very, very, very slowly. Do things in a very methodical, well-thought-out manner, in a very thorough way. And um, uh, cross your T's, dot your I's before you um, make any type of a decision, okay? So it seems like you have a general idea of that new thing that you want to leap into. And you're enthusiastic about it, but there are a lot of things here that needs to be done the proper way, the right way, in order to move this situation along with the best possible foundation, okay? Um, first of all, um, there are some messages, I think, too, that came through while I was shuffling. So I'm going to relay those um, messages for you first, and then we'll go into this, the spread for this month, okay? Okay. Um, there is a need here to um, to want to deepen um, the the conversation or the communication with another person. I feel like there are institutional formality. Um, there is also like even possibly a family rift, and it's it's kind of awkward. It's getting in the way of um, true meaningful communication. I feel like for some of you. It's like you're dealing with coworkers, uh, supervisors, you know, uh, managers or people that are really high up the chain, or you're dealing with your subordinate, and you really want to tell tell them how you feel. You know, like you're a great person. I want to hang out with you outside of work, or you're a really bad worker, and here are some of the things that you should do, what you should do to improve your performance ratings. And but either way, it could be, you know, on the positive end where you really like them or it could be on the negative end where you're trying to help them. But there are rules and regulations in place that's really um, hindering your ability to be truly candid with them when it comes to communication. So um, you're not you're you're kind of struggling with, you know, trying to straddle the fine line between professionalism and just giving somebody a piece of your mind, just telling somebody, just telling it as it is. And so that's, um, it's rare for me to see this with you guys, but I feel like some of you might have a lot, a lot, a lot of um, air in you. Some of you might have a lot of fire in you or even, you know, earth. Um, and you, you want to to increase, like improve the process. You want to uh, have a, an end result the way that you want. And so it's really, you're not one to, you know, want to skirt the issue. You're not one to beat around the bush. And you're not one to, you know, just like talk in circular pattern and, and waste your time and not see any tangible result uh, uh, that come, comes out of it. So I feel like that's the, the source of frustration here. It deals heavily with communication. And it deals with like, why do we need to have so many discussions over the same thing? Why can't we just execute? Why can't we just, you know, make a decision and finalize things? Why do we need to beat around the bush? And I feel like this is something coming in in work setting where it's like, multiple, multiple uh, people have to okay something, multiple, multiple rounds of talks and agreements needs to happen, multiple rounds of uh, negotiations need to happen, and then there are too many players, so it's really hard to get ev all the players in one room so that everyone can be there together and, and give their inputs. So it's a source of frustration for you. And I feel like for some of you... Um, it might play out in the financial sector too, you know, deciding who gets the job, deciding what positions are actually opening up. And is that position still available or is it deemed un, um, redundant? So I feel like there might be people leaving the work environment and 
the, the organization desperately needs somebody to fill in that empty position. But then there's this you know, whole bureaucratic process about, you know, well, the person has to leave and there we all need to like go up the chain of command. We need to approve it. We need to wait to see if there's budget for even keeping that position open. We need to know if, you know, only, um, we need to know if that position is even going to be viable into the future. So there's work to be done. Work is piling on and that position needs to be filled. But it just seems to me like it's going up the chain of command. No one is really sure if it's being filled. So it's frustrating. And especially for those of you who are thinking about, you know, you're eyeing the position and you want to go for it. You want to put in your interest, your letter of interest. You want to, you know, apply for it. And it's just the waiting game. And then there are also situations as well where it deals heavily with seniority. It deals heavily with who's got the, um, who's got the uh, education, who's got the, the work experience. So it's not so much about who's the best candidate. It's more about who looks good on paper, who's got credibility, and then who's got seniority, who's been here the longest. We need to give that person the position. And it's like all of these things are highly bureaucratic. They're incredibly inefficient. And it doesn't take into account the innate skills that somebody has and somebody can bring to the table, regardless of whether or not they have the the education, regardless of, of whether or not they have the work experience, it just seems like you feel you might be a good fit or you feel like somebody else might be a good fit, even though they don't fit the traditional standard mold. So I'm sensing here that it's like creating a little bit of um, an unsettled energy in your work environment because things are not certain, okay? Um, towards the end, well, I, I want to say like towards the end of May, I feel this energy is going to settle for you and there will be a lot, a lot of certainty and clarity coming into the picture. So I would urge you to be very, very uh, patient, okay? Whatever you're not sure about, whatever uncertainty, whatever things that you're getting, you know, some psychic hits on, but you're not 100% sure you will have the answers that you need, okay? So it's just a matter of um, sitting still, listen to things that filter in through the grapevines. Don't give it too much credence. Like, don't just, you know, take it as gospel. Don't believe everything that you're hearing. Towards the end of the month, you're going to realize all of it was, you know, he said, she said. All of it was just... Um, uncertain gossip and communication that were not based on reality okay people talk just to be just because they want to be heard and whatever is coming through you know the the first three weeks of the month I feel like it's going to be refuted the, the information will be refuted and you're going to get some major major breakthrough and clarity come the fourth week of the month um, yeah the fourth week of May in the meantime, I feel like the career front, the work front, is a little bit frustrating. And uh, I'm also sensing, you know, this is a, a really good month for you overall to kind of draw back your energy away from work and focus a little bit more on um, your personal relationships, nurturing your personal relationships. So I feel for many of you, there is a... This is an earth sign, Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. I feel uh, Capricorn and uh, Virgo. If you are dealing with a Capricorn or a Virgo, this is a, a, a person, he or she, okay, because the cards are not gender specific. This is somebody that might be like a little bit domineering, a little bit controlling. Um, I'm seeing as well money pinching like uh, penny pinching, like they're, they're, there are some things that they're holding back on. And this is somebody that is very, 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 very stubborn. So I feel like there's a little bit of conflict coming through and you're trying to figure out how to appeal to this person, how to appease this person, or how to persuade this person to come over to your side. So I feel like when they're showing up in the reverse position, 
they're a little bit more wrapped up in their own problems and their own lives and they're not really listening to what you have to say okay and then on top of that um, it's somebody who is a little bit more on the self-serving end they do things because they want a specific outcome not so much because they care about the greater good you know they could but for for this month they're just a little bit more me 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 um, they're just a little bit more self-obsessed and they're a little bit more self-absorbed so whatever you're telling them you need to in order to, for you to appeal to them you need to um, appeal to their self-interest okay so rather than just saying hey can you help me buy this you can say like hey can you help me buy this so that I can help you do this or you can you know barter do an exchange if you do this for me I'll do this other thing for you so if you have somebody like this even in your work environment an earth sign who's like a little bit more self-interested and they keep dumping things on you you have to tell them well I've done all of these things for you now it's time for you to do it for me or I'll help you do this if you help me with that and I feel like it's a it needs to be an equal ch exchange of energy because with the temperance card on top of it it deals heavily with balance moderation and the give and take in a relationship and I feel for many of you it's a family member or a work uh, colleague or supervisor or you know somebody that is in your work environment and there needs to be um, there needs to be a fair exchange of energy. I'm also sensing for some of you if this is a um, this person might be dealing with some ailments. They're dealing with some uh, worries when it comes to their health, and they're dealing with. Um, it could also be a Taurus, so Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. But I'm seeing strong, very very strong uh, Capricorn and Virgo here. The Taurus person seems to be a little bit more um, stable. The Taurian person seems to be a lot more stable, but uh, that person can also be dealing with some some sadness or some physical ailments, physical symptoms, and they're not operating at their best. Okay, and then likewise, you could be dealing here with a Sagittarius who is going through a lot of emotional um, and financial instability. A lot of it. They have many, many, many times tried to get their life together. Excuse me. They have uh, tried time and time again to get their financial situation on track. They've tried time and time again to get their lives together, but it just feels like they always have somebody else to run back to, and they always have somebody else to kind of like take care of problems for them and so it's a very enabling type of behavior and they don't learn if you're dealing with this person on the romantic front you need to be very very careful that you don't constantly feed into it it's like you know this um, vicious cycle you bring your love and your affection and your um, assistance and it goes towards a person that is not appreciative of it or they're so wrapped up in financial worries and survival mode that they take and take and take and take and then they take and they don't really build anything from it okay so you really gotta re-examine your relationships here you definitely need to really figure out you know is it worth it am I doing the right thing am I enabling this type of behavior and are there other avenues or other people that I can really, you know, give my time, my love, my affection, my resources to? So we got to balance out here. Um, Libra, this is all about you being very, very, um, very nice, okay? You're, you're like one of the sweetest signs. And even if you're upset with somebody, you try your best to be very diplomatic. You try your best to be fair. So it's hard for you to be harsh with somebody and it's hard for you to kind of like, you know, cut somebody down or, you know, give them a piece of your mind because you always want to bring your best foot forward. And I feel like all of this, it's nice and noble and great and just, you know, very admirable. 
but it's being given to a person that is very emotionally unstable, financially unstable, and they are a little bit of a taker, and they come to expect it over time. So it creates this vicious cycle where things are not balanced out. Okay, so I want you to just be careful about that. On the uh, flip side of this, there is some major new breakthroughs happening for you. And uh, let me talk about this. Let me clear this out temporarily, and then let me talk about this. So we have here two aces, water and air. So we have here the Ace of Cups. This is a brand new love offer, and this is something that has a lot of potential to be really nurturing and very... Um, really good for you okay um, the way that I'm seeing this and these are the this is the first card out of the spread right it basically denotes to me overcoming a very very toxic relationship um, moving away from toxicity moving away from bad people moving away from people that once again did not deserve your effort your um, your uh, affection so they they just I feel like falling on deaf ears you know whatever you try to do whatever you try to say whatever you try to help them with it seems like they weren't ready okay emotionally they were very very unstable they weren't ready and so you've had to move away from it with the devil in the reverse let some things go let the energy go and as a result of letting go there is something new burgeoning and coming together for you. We have here the Ace of Cups. And this is like a, a very strong soul connection with somebody where I feel like there is great communication. There's a lot more truth and honesty. You can talk about things. They don't uh, deem any subject you know, to be taboo. They don't hold back. And, and you can like honestly have deep, meaningful communication with them. So if at the beginning of the month, you're just like, Ugh, the com communication or the conversations are so shallow, towards the end of the month, and I would say from now or in, in like the mid-month, 15th to the 30th, uh, there's going to be a deepening of communication, some major breakthroughs happening for you in terms of love. And so right now, it's saying, you know, love is coming around the corner. Love is there. It's on the offing for you. But it seems like you've got some things that you need to clear up from your end. You've got some relationships that you need to let go. You've got to get over some things in your uh, immediate environment people, even jobs that are not serving you well, even old ways of relating to people, um, especially you want to be careful about uh, having to fix everybody's problems. And then when it comes to you needing help, no one's there because, you know, they're self-interested. Or being so diplomatic that you're not communicating your truth and people have no idea what you're saying. It's like confusion when it comes to communicating when we're trying to be so politically correct or we're trying to be so diplomatic and to spare the other person's feelings that we have trouble delivering a message in a meaningful way. And then on top of that, when it comes to love relationships, this indicates to me it's here. But with the judgment card in the reverse, is your family okay with it? Are you okay with it? Are there things that you need to wrap up from your end before you can give this the attention that it deserves? I feel like some of you, um, you might have a, a water sign here, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, that's coming into the picture. If not, they embody the energy of someone who's very young and innocent, someone who's like... Um, um, who who's very unguarded when they're around you and when they're unguarded and innocent and just you know um, they want to help you when you're distressed they're offering their it's like somebody that admires you so I see it as an admirer but I feel like because they really admire you and they catch you at your worst, you know, when you're like stressed out, when you're high strung, when you're dealing with 
with things in your own personal life, things with your family, things with your work environment, um, they're bringing their best foot forward, okay? And I feel like it's not going to be until the end of the month where you realize this. You realize that, oh, they, they have feelings for me or, you know, they're like the one person I could rely on even when everything around me was going awry. So the important thing is the communication will deepen and you will appreciate and you will know where you stand with people and you will know who is actually there for you and who says they're there for you but they're only self-interested. So I feel like there are major things here that needs to be re-examined and um, having a little bit more depth when it comes to your analysis about people and their motives and um, trusting that you, you need to trust people's concrete actions. It's not what they say. It's actually what they're doing for you. Okay, so the, like learn to trust that. Learn to trust these visible, physical actions rather than what is being said, what is, you know, being promised, but just never delivered. Okay, just never, ever delivered. Um, so that's what I have for you here. Let me see if there's anything else. I believe there was another one. Um, I feel... I feel like some people um, leaving the nest, okay, like going off to school, planning school, like uh, working, like doing some type of a educational coursework where you're going to run into a lot more people. So this is like um, the card about institution is family, but also education, like higher education, a community college, a university, a um, master's program, a PhD program. Uh, some type of um, a teaching assistantship if you're in school for higher education. Um, what this denotes to me is this is where you belong, Libra. This is greatly all about where you will find your people. This is where you're going to thrive. This is an environment that will be mentally stimulating for you. Okay, so I feel like the, the, the past is done and over with, and this is what you're looking forward to, the next phase in your life, okay? So decide where you want to go and what you need to do and what course of study you want to take. And don't let another person, it's kind of like, tune out this person. This is your advice here. Tune out this person, whoever this person is. If he or she is very self-serving, if he or she is just like can't get over themselves, if they're looking at you like you're the project that they need to shape and mold, this is probably someone who's operating from a space of ego rather than, you know, true love and tenderness and, um, you know, out of the goodness of their heart, they want you to do well. This is a person that loves like conditionally. They put um, restrictions or they put like conditions on you. You need to get an A for me to love you. You need to be rich for me to love you. You know, like those types of people. They put conditions and limitations on how they feel about you. And you feel like you failed a little bit when you don't leave up, live up to their expectations. So there are some toxic energies in your life. And I feel like you might be kind of like under their, their fingers or wrapped around their fingers. And it's not healthy. It's not healthy when people give you conditions that you have to abide by in order to buy or maintain their love, okay? So what I feel is it's family members, and you need to be really careful. Uh, if it's a relationship partner, you are being manipulated, and you're going to need to see your way out, and you're going to need to at least admit that to yourself, like that person is manipulating me, or they're... they're um, they're guilt tripping me or they're using underhanded tactics to get me to do what I want and that's not right. So it's a big realization and it's time to, you know, like snap out of it and it's time for you to call it what it is and to stop wasting time. This is like a very circular pattern where you give of yourself and it just doesn't really pan out. And then I also feel f as well for many of you, it's a good month for you to really assess, you know, 
who is there for you, who's, who's been good to you, and are you reciprocating their goodness and their kindness, or are you kind of taking it for granted, thinking it's going to be, you know, forthcoming all the time, like it's a, an endless well of goodwill, good tidings, and, you know, good emotions that they're giving you, and that it, it will never run out. Um, re-examine, you know, this, this well of endless good energies and are you doing it justice are you doing the other person justice okay um i'm gonna stop right here uh libras i hope the reading has been helpful my apologies once again for the delay with your reading i hope it is helpful and um you know try your best to really see through the bs okay in your own actions, in other people's own actions as well. Because this isn't a card that discriminates. It's all about the truth. It's all about clarity. And it's all about, you know, doing right by other people. Okay? So I'm going to leave you with that. I wish you the, all the best. Okay? And I'll be back for the uh, next month's reading. Bye-bye.